when you get married, you kind of marry your in-laws as well. Kind of. Or, in another word, when you get married, then you have accepted the people who are related to your wife and your husband. And even if a husband and wife get divorced, the father-in-law and mother-in-law, they remain mahrams to you forever. Forever. Do you understand? Why? Because you have grandchildren. And those grandchildren still want their grandfather and grandmother, even if you got divorced. So, when you marry them, your in-laws do have a certain right to courtesy. Now, I'll teach you very quickly. In dealing with your in-laws, make three circles. Small circle, middle circle, big circle. What are you going to put in those circles? I'll tell you. You and your wife, you and husband have to decide. Well, you, you work it out, inshallah. It takes a few years actually to, to get everything into place. Maybe some people in the first few months. The small circle on the inside are only for the husband and wife. They are the husband and wife's privacy. You do not say a single word about it to anyone else outside of you and your spouse. Not your mother, not your father, not your siblings, not your cousins, not your friends. This is your privacy. If you want a good household and you want love to increase between you and no problems, brothers and sisters, have your privacy. It's not shared anywhere, not even on social media. The second circle is the middle circle. That second circle is what you will share only with your family, with your parents, and maybe a little circle above your siblings. Things that involve your family, meaning your parents and your siblings. Is that understood? You do not share it with anyone else. Finally, the large circle is what you share in public. Unfortunately, this day and age, you know the big circle? For many people now, that's become the middle circle through social media. Everything about their private affairs is on social media, Ya Ammi. Subhanallah. This is why divorce rates are on the rise. This is why conflict and people staying in a toxic marriage is on the rise. Because you share all your private affairs with everybody. Then people come in and get involved. You're the one who invited them. I don't put the blame on people. I put the blame on you if you're one of them. There is a privacy. Once you share it with your mum and dad or your siblings, guess what happens? They start getting involved because you invited them. You need to draw the boundaries. And you need to tell your mother and father, for example, if they ask any questions about your privacy, say, I'm sorry, mum, wallah, I love you. Kiss her on the forehead and, and say, hey, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden me. I don't want to talk about my family. She gets upset. She gets upset. Just because she got upset, it doesn't mean you have to all leave each other. Nah, you still come, you laugh, you smile, you kiss, you say, Wallah, I love you, mum. It doesn't mean, yeah, you still show her goodness, but you don't break, you don't give away. Same with your parents. So, brothers and sisters, this is a very important advice. Number two, this is a bad habit in couples when it comes to their parents and in-laws. They tell their parents and siblings everything. Every time they're upset with each other, they go and tell their sibling. He goes and tells his sister. She goes and tells her sister. They go and tell their mum and dad. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. A husband and wife will have conflicts all the time. You guys are learning about each other. You'll probably resolve your conflict in three nights. But your parents, guess what? For the next year or two, they're thinking about it. In fact, you would have probably placed an opinion in their head that your wife's a bad woman or her husband's a bad man. Do you understand what happens? Don't talk about everything to them and don't follow everything they tell you. Number three, living separately. We said that. Live separately to your in-laws. Don't be too close. Trust me on that one. Get your privacy because it lessens your stress. Lastly, when in-laws wrongfully involve themselves. Sometimes the husband or the wife don't know to listen to their wife or to listen to their mother, to listen to her husband, to listen to her father. My brothers and sisters, let me give you a formula to how to separate the two. Let's say you're the son and your mother demands something from you. This is how you look at it. If what your mother tells you to do, just give you an example, mother tells you to do, is about you personally, then obey her. For example, 
She says, son, drink this milk that I made. Yeah, and she must have. Or drink this sweet that I made. Eat it. Obey your mother and eat it because that's you. Son, help me lift this thing up. Okay. Son, can you take me <coughs> tomorrow, call the doctor for me, make me an appointment? Yes. But if she tells you to do something that involves something that is shared with your wife, <coughs> then that is not her right. For example, <coughs> she says, son, I want you to have your wife pregnant within the next two years. I want a grandchild. Wallahi, I've heard some parents, they go, if it's not a son, it's not a grandson, I don't want it. Wallahi, I've heard this. So if it's not a grandson, I don't want to see it. And how far do you go? That is the right of the son, and of the father, of the husband and wife. The mother has no right to do that. He doesn't obey her. Son, let's say the father says, your wife must dress in this way or she can't come in. That's between the husband and wife. Uh, a brother or a sister says, your wife should be working here, not there. That's none of their business. None of their business whatsoever. Let's say the family comes together and they say, listen, we've all made a donation box. Everybody's going to take part. All right. The siblings can take part, but their husbands and wives, they don't have to. Nobody has the right to force them and say, why didn't they come in? And if they don't donate and do whatever the family did, they look at them funny. Every time they come in the house, oh, her, him, oh, they're stingy. They don't even take, but they don't love the family. Wallahi, this is haram. This is how you divide people. If you love your children, you love your siblings, get out of their business. Leave them alone. And if they do that to your brother and sister, khalas, have a distance. Have a distance between you and them because you don't want to destroy your family. Don't cut them off, but have a distance. Even if it means the son just goes and visits his parents and the wife from time to time. Doesn't matter. Sometimes they say, your wife has to help in the house, the parents' house, just like your sister-in-laws do. Now, if that's a custom and a tradition, it'll be nicer for the wife to help out of her own goodwill, but she's not obliged. And I say to my sisters and brothers, no, no, help your in-laws. Do good things because you're building the love anyway. But what I'm saying is that when it comes to a point where, where it becomes like a force and uh, the wife or the husband, they're tired, they're, they're being oppressed, well, you can back off. You don't have to. And lastly, uh, the cultures and customs, I said it, help each other, inshallah. Finally, brothers and sisters, marriage is about harmony, love and getting together. Be good to your in-laws. Be good to your brother and your sister-in-laws, your brother-in-laws. Be good to your wife and husband's family. Be good to each other. Do extra to what you can. If there's conflict, you and your wife, you and your husband, sit down and talk about it. Say, how, how are we going to deal with my mother's jealousy? How are we going to you, deal with my father's stubbornness? How are we going to deal with my sister or my brother? The wife and husband can talk together and come to a mutual agreement.